What up you guys? Me again. I made this video one second after the video that I just made. Um, so, am I afraid, am I afraid to die? Absolutely. I, I'm glad God doesn't keep that thought in my mind obsessively every day, all the time, because it would tear me apart. I would be living in fear throughout my entire life, um, thinking, what is it like to die? What's it like to die? I've never had my soul popped out of my body before. Never. Well, here's the thing. Not that I can remember or anything, but, you know, you guys, I, I've mentioned videos before that I've taken 36 clonazepam, clonopin, anxiety p pills, prescript, prescribed only, um, at once, um, like 50 antidepressants right after that, of like five at a time, you know, um, and drank more than half a bottle of wine, all at once, in less than an hour, and I only lo lost consciousness. Well, when I l lost consciousness, I could have actually gotten out of my body you know my soul could have popped out of my body but god could have erased that from my memory um i mean because me drinking a bottle of 750 ml bottle of vodka like that's like hang on a second it's like this tall of vodka of a bottle of vodka um i drank that in like five hours back in 2016 in January, um, just went to sleep because I couldn't see crap. My eyes were blurry, like looking underwater. Um, and, uh, lost consciousness. Um, later that year, I drank, uh, a 750 ml bottle of tequila because I had an alcohol problem back then. Yes, Christians have issues with addictions and stuff, um, drank the whole thing in margaritas, um, <clears throat> passed out on my couch, um, sitting up, I passed out on my couch, one second I had a glass in my hand, the next second I, like, woke up out of a daze and my cup was, with ice, was on the floor, um, then I've take, then back in June of 2014, I drank a bottle of wine, got drunk, took a box of Benadryl, 24, all at once. Um, there's only two things I remember of that night. Doing that, and there was a pair of shoes in my living room back then, in my apartment of 2014. And this was actually before I got saved. Um, so I could have died, and I would be in hell right now for eternity. Um... And I saw my shoes in the next room. Two seconds later, they were in my bedroom. Like, it's just scary, right? Um, let's see here. September of 2019. Um, as you can see, hang on a second. As you can see, this giant scar on the top of my wrist right there. That right there, I cut through my dermis, my dermis layer of, um, of skin. Um, I cut through my dermis layer and I, I severed through two veins, um, and I saw my arteries. They were small arteries. They were, they weren't big arteries, but, uh, I, if I severed through those arteries, I would not be here right now. Blood would have spurted everywhere i would have bled to death medical assistant would e wouldn't even be able to make it in time i would have bled out in seconds at least um so i could see my arteries there are these these little red or little purple lines deep inside and um and i saw like fat cells and stuff like that so i slipped my top of my wrist with um with a piece of broken glass, took like four hours, but I, w I wasn't bleeding that much actually because I 
I don't know if you can see that right there on my hand, that scar right there, right there. That was actually a vein right there. And I severed that vein. And that vein right there connects to the your wrist and stuff. And I lost a lot of blood, but not not a fatal amount of blood. Not enough blood to make you dizzy or whatever. So, um, because veins pump the blood back into the heart. Arteries, um, however, pump the blood out of your body each time your heart beats. So, and at a very strong pace, meaning very hard, meaning blood's going to spray everywhere. It's not just going to be a little oozing of blood. It's going to be like a puddle of blood, a puddle of blood on top of a puddle of blood. Um, so yeah, um, several months ago, I took 43 clonazepam at once. And before that, I took 27 clonazepam at once, both mixed, both with alcohol. Um, I was trying to kill myself, yes, I'm not going to lie, um, because Satan was in my mind and he told me that I was worthless and nobody in this life cares about me. I've been abandoned by my birth mother. My birth mother gave me up for adoption, but that doesn't mean anything to me. She gave me up for adoption. She, I was her prized possession. And she decided to give me away? Are you flipping kidding me? She gave me away. And she stopped contacting us like like 20 years after she gave us away. Because it was too hard for her. Yeah, freaking right. Um, and she has a daughter. I have a sister somewhere out in the world. She has a daughter. And she didn't give her away. You know? My adoptive parents met her, um, and, uh, they said that my birth mother couldn't, ha couldn't raise a child because hardship that she went through, but to me, that's abandonment. I've been abandoned by so many people on Facebook, online. Th so what? Those are my friends. Even though they're online long distance, they're my friends. I care about them. As much as a brother and a sister. And, um, yeah. I de developed depression from being heartbroken too much. Um, yeah. I was almost certain that I was going to die back in December 5th when I took... 50 clon or 50 antidepressants 40 36 clonazepam and drank bottle a bottle half a more than a little more than half a bottle of wine i was almost certain that i was going to die i even wrote a suicide note because the stress of the covid crap was just <sighs> it was just <sighs> too much and now i don't even have enough clonazepam to last me a long time I can't stop taking it every day. I'm not addicted to it or anything, but if I, if I take it every day, or if I stop taking it every day, the stress could get to me, and stress could come back from COVID. And what these do is they suppress stuff. They suppress anxiety. They suppress um, shyness. They suppress... Stress. So suppress doesn't mean that it takes them away. I'm, I'm on it right now. I'm relaxed. But suppress suppressing doesn't take it away. It just blocks it from you feeling it. Makes you numb to it. It's still there, but you just can't feel it. It's like being drunk. It happens in the same receptors in your brain. That's what uh, clonazepam does. It gives you kind of like a buzz feeling, like calm and mellow and relaxed you know um not even for that long but after that wears off it still is uh it's still there um but you just can't feel it but it's still working um so yeah i've done a lot of stuff in my life that i should have died from so i wouldn't i have no doubt in my mind that i actually did die and god erased the memory for me but 
actually, I do have doubts because the Bible says, for it is appointed for man to die once, and then after this comes the judgment. No back, no bringing back to life. But then I don't know why God brings back people back to life when they go to heaven and see their loved ones and stuff. Then they have to go back and tell God gives them a mission on back on earth to tell people what they saw and everything. So I, I don't know. Um, but why I'm afraid to die is because I've never experienced my soul popping out of my body. Once your soul comes out of your body, you see all the spiritual beings that's all around you. Right now, in this very living room, there are demons. There are angels. Jesus himself is here. You're being watched every single millisecond until you die. They're everywhere. Everywhere. Demons cannot touch you because of the, the power of Jesus. And there are actually angels fighting demons with their swords. They're fighting the fallen angels with their swords. Fallen angels have swords. Angels have swords. And they, they're they fighting them. So, and the power of God uh, allows the demons to not be able to physically harm somebody. They're spiritual beings. They can't harm a physical being. They can only harm somebody who's spiritual. So that's good news right there. You don't have to be afraid. I'm not scared of demons because I know they can't touch me. But they can, in fact, get into your mind. They can get into your mind because your your mind is actually your soul form. And it's spiritual. Parts of your brain is spiritual. And then they can actually get into your mind spiritually and tell you bullcrap stuff, lies and stuff, that you're worthless and stuff. And they try to make you commit suicide. They've tried to make me commit suicide before and I actually attempted it. I've almost died before, um, but the grace of God, I don't know why he's keeping me in this world. I must have a higher it, divine purpose. If you guys comment in comment below in the comment section why God is keeping me alive in this world, comment below telling me what his plan is for me. I've already completed the will of God. The will of God is for everybody to come to to come to heaven to be saved the will of god for each person is to be saved to believe in his son jesus christ so i've already committed i committed i've already done the will of god i've already done that the reason why jesus says not everybody who calls me lord lord will enter the kingdom of god but those who do the will of the father who's in heaven is because people live their lives thinking they're good enough to get to heaven, but they've not never actually accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior and believed in the sacrifice for their sins. Then they get to heaven, and bam, they call Lord, Jesus Lord, Lord, and stuff, but they've not come. They they haven't done the will of God, which is believing in Jesus Christ. And getting saved. It's the e the will of God. It's taken me years to figure out what the will of God was. And I, it's so easy to figure out. Or not easy to figure out because it took me years, you know. But it's the easiest thing to do. Getting saved is as easy as it is for a child to do it. There's no... <laughs> You can come to Jesus Christ, God the Father, as you are. If you're a murderer, that's okay. If you're a rapist, that's okay. If you're a pedophile, that's okay. If you're a child molester, that's okay. You just come to God as you are, and he will fix up your life. If only you have faith in his Son. Believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior by believing what he has done for you on the cross at Calvary. Believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. God rose him from the dead three days later, and you shall be saved. Romans 10, 9. For if we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, believe in our heart that God rose him from the dead, we shall be saved. Come to God as you are. You're a filthy sinner like we are. Um, but if you come to God as you are, there's no need to change your life. He will change your life for you. If you try to change your life, it means nothing because you're still a sinner. He will take away your sins. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. It's very powerful. Amen.